Good to go? You did? All right, Matt, are you ready? All right, we'd like to welcome Adam Scott to the interview room here at the Genesis Invitational. Adam, you're making your 16th start, seven top tens, past champion. What's it like to be back? Well, it's always a highlight of my year playing here. I love this track and I love this event. I'm lucky enough to have won it twice and it's my favorite event I play on tour, so I'm so thankful to be a sponsor's invite this week and get the chance to have another go around Riviera at the Genesis. And you're making your third start this season, coming off a top 10 finish last week. Um, just some comments on the state of your game right now. Yeah, I played quite nicely last week, especially um, Sunday I played 30-something holes, I think, and, and played nicely and finished with a top 10. I generally like the way my game is feeling. Um, it's been two interrupted weeks for me on tour this year, so uh, it's been tough to get in a rhythm. Hopefully a good week this week, and um, I can keep the good momentum with my golf game going. Awesome. With that, we'll open it up to questions. If you could just raise your hand, we'll get a microphone over to you. Oh, we'll We'll start with Dan over here on the left-hand side. You've had such an incredible career. Uh, it's, it's funny hearing you saying that you're here on a sponsor's exemption. When's the last time you had to rely on a sponsor's exemption before this year, and, and what, what's that conversation like? Um, yeah, I, don't, I can't remember exactly when the last sponsor's invite was. I mean, I probably have been invited to a, a tournament in Asia or something like that throughout the years, but... Uh, on the tour, it's been a while, that's for sure. Um, and it, that was fine, and I and I fully, uh, I'm of the view that these Im invitations are unrestricted to the sponsors, and they can invite whoever they want, and that's up to them. So I feel lucky uh, that I've got one of them. And um, if I didn't, then. You know, I didn't qualify, so that's, that's how it goes. I don't expect to get invited to every tournament that I ask for either. Um, but I am very happy to be here. Like I said, this is an event I look forward to very much. It's my favorite track uh, of the year and uh, hopefully make the most of it. If you had to distill it down to what makes this golf course so special, what, what would you say? I, I don't think too many people would argue that it's a great designed golf course, um, but there are other things to me. Obviously, I've played nicely here, so I have good feelings about that. I have feelings like I'm in Australia when I play the 12th, 13th, 14th, and 15th holes. The eucalyptus trees kind of smell like it does in Australia. The grass is similar. Um, the weather can be similar as well. <laughs> nice weather here in LA, and... Um, you know, there's, I just have this certain level of comfort. So there's, there's more than just purely a great golf course for me. We'll head over to Sean over here on the right. Adam, uh, in terms of the player equity system, I'm wondering to what extent are you aware of the details of it? And then secondly, like why you think player equity is important? I'm aware of the details as much as that's been shared with um, the entire membership. Um, which is fairly broad outline and still some things to be worked out. Um, but I think, I think it is a good thing for players on the PGA Tour going forward that they um, are sharing in the success of the tour and certainly aligning their interests with the PGA Tour and, and going forward... Hopefully that is a, a great reward for players who spend their life out here playing. I guess do players communicating with you in the board position, do they view it as important? Does it feel like an important asset that you guys will be having in the future? Uh, I think in time they'll understand. Like, I, like we just said, I mean, not all the details are there, so... Um, Recently, not being a player on the board and, and sitting in a big group of members, when things like this happen, I think um, sometimes little notice is taken until it's all finalized. So um, I hope once all the details are ironed out and uh, the equity 
program is put into place, guys will be very excited and, and obviously be pushing for good things to happen at the PGA Tour. Additional questions for Adam? Sean again on the right-hand side. Uh, less equity in this question. When you uh, have a Sunday like you just did, 30 holes or so, um, it's something you're not used to, I'm sure. What part of your game starts to feel different in those extra 12 holes or so? Is there anything that kind of tires out quicker or a way that you need to refocus? Only the body and the mind, you know. <laughs> it's, uh, there, there is for sure no doubt. I mean, I, I haven't been 100% health the last few weeks, so last week was a bit of a challenge because I played like 30 holes on Friday and 30 holes on Sunday. Um, but th there's no doubt, like, I was feeling my left hip, you know, felt a bit tired, like, <laughs> going into the last nine. Um, and, you know, the fact of the matter is I'm not 25 anymore, but I'm still in pretty good shape. I'm not complaining about it. I made it, and I played well. Um, but there is the reality of some age things, and, um, you know, it was recovery is important as well you know I, I i don't practice quite as much as i did 10 years ago either um so it, it's it's all a bit of a balance but fortunately i was in good enough health to get through last week hopefully i've got some in the tank for this week too we have time for a couple more we'll go to doug i had and a couple Bob. more with an option for a third what <laughs> how, how much what is your um how many peak years do you have left do you ever think about stuff like that or do you still feel, feel 30? <laughs> that was a joke. Um, I, I, think, I think I've got a, at least a couple in me, Doug. Um, you know, staying healthy. I, I'm in good shape and uh, just comparing myself to uh, some of the guys who are playing at the top of the game. You know, if you're looking at numbers and things like this, which we do a lot now, I think I'm relevant. But... Uh, at the end of the day, it's about executing it, and you know I obviously have to do a little better job to think I'm one of the best players in the world at the moment. Um, but I, I, for sure, think I've got um, a couple more years, unless all of a sudden my numbers start tapering off quickly. Who's who has impressed you the most for longevity? Oh, there, there are a few guys. Um, well, we even, <laughs> even Fred Couples today, I mean, he's still making it look pretty easy at 64 years old, and I know, I know he, uh, he looks like he's going to make the cut at the Masters most years still. It's quite, it's quite impressive. Um, I, I think there are a few guys out here, Matt Kuchers out here still playing at a high level. We saw Ch Charlie Hoffman at 47 nearly winning the other day. So it's possible, but it, it's definitely getting harder for the guys in their mid-40s to stay competitive at the top week in and week out. But when, when you're a talented player and you're on the PGA Tour any given week, I think you can still get it done. But it's harder, harder to do it year-round. I had one more that's so stupid, I'm going to turn it over to Adam first. Go ahead, Adam. I'm not sure mine's any <laughs> better, but uh, what made you... Um, want to be on the policy board at this stage in your career? Well, when I, when I uh, put myself up for, uh, to be elected as chairman of the PAC, which puts you on the policy board, that was back in Jul January last year. And at that time, the signature events had kind of been put in place and I, I was quite interested to be involved in the evolution of the competitions at the, PG, at the PGA Tour and how the signature events might evolve and the competition and the FedEx Cup. And I felt like I, I had a perspective that I could share and be helpful at the board level with how, how that goes. Um, little did I know that I'd get involved in some business deals and other things like that, but... That's, that was my motivation for going on the board. I, f I felt like I could be a positive contributor in that are, sense. Are you concerned that it could be detrimental to your own game, the time commitment and how much you're having to do? 
Yeah, I think if it's ongoing, like how it, how it's been, you know, I I have to give a lot of credit to the players who've been who've been on there. I've been only on a month, but uh, I know the players who were on there the last six months of last year um, have given a lot of time. And yeah, I th I think we have to be aware that we have another job and to play high level golf you you need to put a lot into that and that in, that includes time for the brain to rest and recover as well and it i i think everyone involved at the PGA tour and including SSG are, are grateful to the guys who've put in so much time and are and are hoping that it won't require as much time going forward. Adam, last one, and then we gotta head to okay. Bob. Where do you fall on on uh, the cuts during these these signature events? Yeah, I I generally think um, all they should all look the same if they can. I know that might be tricky with Pebble Beach because it's a pro am, so that, that's a slightly different uh, one. But I. But generally, I think they should all have cuts or all not have cuts, and and that's how I would answer that. I, I don't mind. I, I mean, I would pick probably what is the best decision for television sponsors, fans. That that's what I would pick. But I but I think it would be a better look for people following the tour if it was more similar, so it was easier to follow along with what's going on rather than different things every week. Final question with Bob. Adam, your, your last win, which was here, was only a few weeks before COVID, and obviously as disruptive as that was in general, was it particularly momentum killing for you? It seemed like you were in a really good spot at that point and, and, and maybe had more trouble than others kind of getting back. Uh, I just wonder if you ever f reflect on that and, and how it might have impacted you. Um, yeah, probably. Yeah, I, I think I was playing great at the time when I won, and I, I, I think I was top ten kind of in the world and and trending in a good direction. Yeah, COVID was tricky because I think not living in the United States through that period was quite tough. I, I spent a lot of time quarantining. I think it was 16 or 18 weeks in the end uh, through the COVID period. So that was probably detrimental. Um, a lot of time wasted in a sense, not being productive for anything. And um, yeah, I, I think it has been, I, I have found it tougher to get back. I'm, I'm not complaining. I mean, everyone faced difficulties, but um, you know, I sit here and I feel good about my game today and hopefully I'm on, on the path back to some high-level golf. Appreciate the time, Adam. Good luck this week. Okay, thank you.